by the looks of my watch, it's officially grave time. Today's episode takes place at the Sacramento City Cemetery, located in Sacramento, California. It was founded in 1850 when Captain John Sutter gave up 10 acres of land to become burial. Now just about a hop, skip, and a jump away, I work over at the California Department of Tax and Fee Administration, located at 450 Inn Street. Been there almost close to 15 years, and uh, almost every single day after work, depending on the weather, I will go over to the cemetery and explore, and have been visiting the cemetery since September of 2002. That's nearly 22 years of coming to the Sacramento City Cemetery. During the pandemic, when everyone was at home, curled up in a ball, scared of the things going on in the world, I was outside exploring cemeteries because it's my hobby and it's what I love. And one of the many trips to the Sacramento City Cemetery, alongside the Richards Boulevard section of the cemetery, looking towards Target Shopping Center, I found a grave of a man by the name of Arthur Frank Casebolt. Something about his grave was just intriguing to me, and I took a picture of it and brought it home and researched it and found out something really interesting about this man's life. I went on to findagrave.com, which is where I do mainly most of my research from. There I was able to locate the information about this man's grave, Arthur Frank Casebolt. And from here on out, I'm just going to refer to him as his middle name, Frank because that's what the newspapers chose to say his name was. Now, uh, on findagrave.com, there was already a little bit of information on here about him. Uh, since making this video, I've updated all the information with some newer newspaper clippings about the story of his life that I'm about to tell you. Frank Casebolt was 37 years old, married, and had two stepchildren from his wife's first marriage. He was employed by the Sacramento Fire Department, and on the morning of January 31st, 1903, along with his comrades, summoned to the intersection of 4th and K Street in downtown Sacramento. The big white building, as it was called back then, owned by Weinstocks and Lubin and Company, was on fire. The firefighters entered the building while it was ablaze looking for anyone that could be possibly stuck in the fire. And unfortunately, there was a casualty. Mr. Frank Casebolt sadly had died when the wall of the building had collapsed. Two other firefighters by the name of Al Pritchard and William Yule were also injured in the fire, but they survived. The following information I found on newspapers.com and it takes place from the Sacramento Bee on the day of the fire, January 31st, 1903. And this uh, information is uh, based off of the coroner's report. When the wall appeared to be shaking, Casebolt and his companions made a run for safety. The wall fell, however, a part of it is known as the firewall, struck Casebolt, killing him instantly. The right side of his skull was crushed in as though it had been as an eggshell. His nose was broken and his left jaw was also broken. The right jaw was badly splintered and both eyes blackened. The death of the fireman never realized what hit him as the blows of the falling bricks in the opinion of the coroner snuffed out his life instantly. Those firefighters were basically on a suicide mission because they didn't have fire hats. In this article that I found from 1903, February 3rd in the Sacramento Bee, it states that they're going to buy aluminum hats for the firefighters and that now they all have to wear them. True story, folks. The common sense that we have today most likely didn't exist back then. And to think that these guys did not have fire helmets on while tackling a fire, that it took the act of a man to lose his life for the fire board to decide, hey, we're going to cough up money and buy fire hats. Now, the cause of the fire 
is quite strange. And according to this book from Annette Cassis, great book, by the way, bought it a few years ago. It's called Weinstock's Sacramento's Finest Department Store. In there, she states that the fire was caused by some kind of combustion, a mixture of oil rags and boxes. Um, I couldn't find a newspaper article on newspapers.com that specified how it all started. So I'm going to take her word for it. She's the expert. She wrote this book. I suggest you go out and buy it if you want to learn more about the history of wine stocks. On the day of the fire, Colonel H. Weinstock, one of the owners of the department store, stated that he would build this building bigger and better than ever before. And he did. On February 4th, 1903, at the Odd Fellows Hall in Sacramento, there they had the funeral for Frank Casebolt. And his particular tombstone was provided by the Woodmen of the World, which was a fraternal organization that he belonged to, along with the native sons of the Golden West. For those of you who are curious like myself and wanting to know what is at 4th and K Street today, well, it's definitely not the Weinstock's department store. It's a Holiday Inn, and the pathway you take to the left will take you underneath the freeway to Old Sacramento, and if you go right of the Holiday Inn Hotel, that takes you to the Old K Street Mall, which today is known as Doco. Take that pathway and it'll take you to the Golden One Center where the Sacramento Kings play. Recently, I was out at the Capitol Park exploring because I hadn't been out there in a while. There I checked out the Rose Garden. There's really no roses. They've all been pruned because it's winter. And then walked over to the Vietnam Veterans Memorial and then moseyed on over to the California Firefighters Memorial. There I wanted to pay my respects to Frank Casebolt and the rest of the firefighters who are remembered on this wall. And unfortunately, Frank's name was not there, but another man with the same last name by the name of James, James Casebolt. Now, before doing this video, I did a little bit of research and I couldn't find anything about this guy. Now, I don't believe there's some kind of mistaken identity and they're both one and the same person. They could be two separate different people, which I believe that's what it is but I can't understand why Frank is not on here. He perished in the 1903 fire at Weinstock's and Lubin and Company. Here in Sacramento, he should be remembered and he's not there. So earlier today, I made a phone call to the nonprofit organization that's in charge of this uh, California Firefighters Memorial and uh, asking how come uh, he is not there. Now, I haven't gotten a full response, and I'm looking forward to getting a response from them. And uh, possibly we'll do a follow-up in the near future once I find out uh, what the criteria is to get someone submitted to this wall. But if anyone should be on there, it should definitely be him. This concludes this episode of Grave Time. Thank you to all the first responders who keep our community safe God bless you. Appreciate it 100%. I hope this video encourages you all to get out and explore. Get off your phones. Get out and explore nature. Explore the things around you, the history, like the Sacramento City Cemetery. Perhaps maybe even Capitol Park. And if you like this type of stuff, please be sure to subscribe to Grave Time here on YouTube. And also hit that notification bell so you can be in the loop of the next Grave Time adventure. Until next time, God bless you all, have a wonderful day, and bye.